Chrissy Hoffman is the General Secretary of Uni Global Union. She joins me from Geneva. Let's, do, let's break the discussion down, if you like, into two distinct groups, if we may, uh, Chrissy. The first, of course, is if what we might describe as the developed world, those countries like the United States, the European Union, where there are benefits in place, but uh, there have not been enough. And then in other parts of the world, we'll talk about the, where there simply isn't the social safety net. Let's talk about the, the developed world, first of all. When we look Look at the number of people who have been put out of work in the United States, many of whom will not get their jobs back again, what can be done? Well, first, Richard, thanks for having me on your, on your show again. Um, it's indeed, you know, a shattering life experience for the numbers of people who have lost their jobs, no matter if it's developed or developing. The, the numbers in the U.S. are staggering. Um, it, you know, we, we have to say, I just want to make a contrast with Europe, where workers haven't really lost their jobs. There's been a, a temporary unemployment scheme put into effect so that they stay uh, employed, but the state subsidizes the job. So it's a bit less of a cut. It might be the same question. They're out of work, but they're still linked to the employer in a more uh, specific way. And I think that's what's lacking in the U.S. People are feeling more insecure. Uh, their their uh, unemployment, their, you know, health care is often linked to their employment, which makes the situation worse. So it's a good thing that there's a the supplement to unemployment. It stays in effect until July. That's a good thing, but it, the, I think people living on the edge there, it's very precarious, and as I said, it can be life-shattering to go through this insecurity. And there's also a lot of falseness in the numbers, probably on both sides of the Atlantic. But if you take the US, for example, the airlines, well, they haven't laid people off because they're not allowed to right. under the bailout plans that they all signed up to. And then if you look at PPP, well, they were all to, they, they were under a government scheme, like in Europe, to, imp to artificially keep right. people on the payroll. But when that runs out they may get laid off. In the same case in the UK, though, Christy, when the job retention scheme comes to an end, if it's, right. not, if it's not extended, people will be, will be fired or laid off there too. Right. So we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months as these economies reopen. So uh, presumably some of these people will go back to work. And we are seeing that now. We're seeing the, some of the countries in Europe gradually reopen. And in our sectors in retail, some are slowly going back. So that will address some of it. In the long term, we need some long-term investment in infrastructure, green jobs, and so on. We need a long-term recovery plan that's not just going to be patchwork holding, right. holding things together. Um, right now, uh, you know, it, we've got these, these schemes in place, as you say, in, in both sides of the Atlantic that should... Uh, uh, shoulder the, the okay. worst shock. Now, if we then look at what's happened in the developed world, the problem here is, of course, so much of the developing world requires, mm. either by raw materials or partly finished goods, uh, or to provide services on strong economies in places like North America and, uh, the, the, and in Europe. If those economies are not succeeding, well, there's really only China as an engine of growth, and the developing world's going to suffer really badly. Right. And we're seeing already the developing world is suffering terribly. I mean, just uh, two weeks ago, or uh, this week, in fact, a big security, private security company laid off 800 workers in Peru just like that, no severance pay, no, they don't have an unemployment scheme. With The unemployment levels are are enormous already, but more so, but they just don't have the safety net. So they're not getting an unemployment right. uh, insurance anywhere near to replace their wages. You've got million, you've got thousands and thousands of workers out of the two million uh, migrant workers in Qatar without any income whatsoever. They're only getting food. Um, so it's already quite a catastrophe in many countries. Right. Christy, I promise you one thing, we will continue to watch and we will continue to cover, and we promise to have you back as this develops so we can have the, the, your, your, your perspective on this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Just